In this video, we're going to take a look at all of the different types of lights that we have available inside of Blender, so that when we go about lighting our own scene, we know exactly which types to use and why we're using them. So the first type of light, you can actually just use any object. So I have this mesh right here, and as long as you were in cycles and we're using an emission shader, which you can find right there, we can light pretty much anything. So it's going to take the shape of that object and it's going to treat each face as its own area light. So what we can do is scale this up and the larger it is, the stronger it is, and also the softer the shadows that it's going to cast. So you can think of this like a light box in a studio setup. The larger it is, the softer shadows you're going to have, and the smaller that it is, the sharper the shadows are going to be. So we can also take this and increase the strength and of course change the color to anything that we'd like. So this is really handy just because it it acts as an area light and we can throw it onto any object that we want and that is very nice. The next type of light that we have is an actual lamp so we can use point lamps is the most generic type inside of Blender. You can see that we're getting a much cleaner result much faster so it is a little bit quicker to use and this is generating light from a single point in space so there's no area or volume in this light it's just a point in space that it's emitting light in all directions so the options that we have here are the size and this sort of simulates the size just like we had in the mesh object the larger that this is the softer our shadows are going to be we also have a strength option which does exactly what you would expect we can also check this to cast shadows or not cast shadows depending on our needs most likely though we're going to want to cast shadows now the max bounces here is something inside of cycles that we can use to help speed up our rendering if I set this all the way down to zero you can see what's happening we're not getting any of that light bounced from the wall down into this shadow and this is like what you would get if you were using blender internal or any other rendering engine that does not have global illumination or path tracing so that would simulate the direct light and the more bounces that we add the more light we're going to get inside of these areas as the light bounces around and finds the crevices so normally we don't need too many but it's just good to be aware of in case it's too noisy we can just turn that right off and we're going to get a smoother result instantly we can also use multiple important sampling so for having a lot of lights with lots of glossy objects that's what that's used for and we can use that to say hey we want this light to have priority and it's going to smooth out any weird noise that we might have when it comes to glossy objects so that's it for the regular point lamp next we have a sun lamp so that's just a lamp that is pointing in a direction it doesn't matter where this is I can move this anywhere in three-dimensional space and it's not going to change anything the only thing that is going to change is if I rotate this then it'll change the direction that that light is coming from. So this is simulating that since the sun is so far away, it doesn't necessarily matter where we move on the ground, it's still going to be hitting us in about the same direction. So you can just take this and rotate it to whatever you want. And of course, like before, the size is going to determine the softness of the shadows right there. Next up we have an area lamp. So this is similar to a mesh lamp in fact, if you took a square plane and just put it in the exact same place with the same dimensions and everything, you could get a pretty much identical result. So the size of this, again, increases the softness of the shadows, and you have your strength and everything. So normally this is going to be a very small... Oh, it would help if I selected the right object. Um, so this is by default going to be a very small plane, and you're going to get very sharp shadows but then as we increase this to more of a softbox we can get nice soft shadows and of course everything else is pretty much the same except we have the option to have a portal but we won't cover that in this video we'll cover that in the next one we're talking about our workflow so we can also change this from square to rectangle in case we want to have a differently sized object and we can rotate that in any direction Alright, next up we have a 
spotlight. So this is pretty much the same kind of spotlight that you would get in any rendering software. It just projects in the shape of a cone coming out from the middle of that point right there. And again, size is going to increase the softness of the shadows. You can see that there. The strength is going to do the exact same thing. Now, the other options that we have down here are the spot shape. So the larger this is, the wider that cone is going to be. But it can't go any farther than 180 degrees, which is a complete circle. And then we also have a blend option right here, which just blends between the outer and inner edges. So inside of this circle right here is going to be the maximum amount of light. And inside this outer circle is going to be the minimum amount of light. And the gradient in between that is going to be determined by the blend size. Now we can show the cone and that just helps us see exactly where that light is hitting in our 3D scene. So in case you need to do that uh, and it helps you with lighting, then you can go ahead and check that. Now another tool that we have for lighting is IES lights. And that's something that we can use in conjunction with an add-on. So I'll show you how that works when we're setting up our own scene. But what that's going to do is take IES file data. IES stands for Illuminating Engineering Society. And the IES standard file format was created for transferring photometric data over the web so we can know exactly what kind of light is going to produce what result. And this is really a manufacturing thing, not very artistic, but thankfully we can take these files, import them into Blender, and get a really nice result right here like we would get in a, this example seems like a security light outside of a building or something like that, but they're all types of lights and you can find exactly what make and model you want to use and plug it into Blender and there we go, we have a texture on our light and it's going to give us this nice re realistic result which is much better than a regular point light or anything like that. So the options for this, if we select this after it's imported, I'll show you how to do that in a later video, you can just press N to bring up the properties panel and under there we have our lamp properties so it give us our strength and also our color. So we can change that to be however we want. And there are lots of different types of IES files over the web. I'll give you some that you can use to start out. Uh, but you can find them freely available online in quite a lot of places. It just takes a little bit to look for them since uh, it's more of a manufacturing thing. It's not exactly easy for artists to find exactly what they're looking for. Another way that we can light our scene is with the environment itself. So if we just go to our world panel here and with our background, we can increase the strength of that. I had it set to zero just so we can show the lights a bit better. But if we set that to one, you can see that the environment itself, the light is coming from every direction and coming into our scene and giving us this nice, really, really soft light. And it's good for a nice fill. And we can change the color and strength of that just like any other light. Now, this is really cool because we can add textures to this. So for instance, we can add a world, a sky texture, excuse me, and this is going to give us a simulated sky and we can use this little ball thingy right here to change which direction the sun is coming from and so on and it'll change the time of day and all of that so if we do that it gives us a nice color we get the reflection of the atmosphere reflection of the ground and the time of day and helps us give a little bit better result than we would with just a flat light and you can see that that just makes things a little bit more realistic and a more appealing to the eye. Now, if you want to go one step further, we can actually use HDRs, and that's what we're going to be using in our example. So that stands for high dynamic range, and it's a type of image that was taken at multiple exposures, and we can use those inside of our 3D scene to light our objects. So let's just change this from sky texture to environment texture, and I'll just load one that I have already and I'll show you how to load them in an, another video but we can just use this and it's going to map it to the world around us and now we can light our scene with that and all of those subtle colors are now translated into our image and it helps give us a nice realistic result the last thing that I want to share with you is ambient occlusion so this is pretty simple but if you turn this on it's going to probably blind you at first because everything is going to turn white and what that's going to do is pretty much add light to anywhere 
except where there are corners and crevices and things like that. So it's going to lighten up everything except where objects are touching. You can see right down here that it's a little bit darker. And if we turn this down to make it not quite so strong, you can see that it's just helping to increase the amount of light in our room a little bit. And that's really good for our indoor scenes, where we don't want to pump in so much light that it takes forever to render and calculate all those things. So if we don't have a light, uh, let's just get rid of that texture. And let's say it's completely black. If we increase the ambient occlusion, we can get a very smooth result very quickly without using any lights. So it's sort of a nice little shortcut if we have too many shadows or our image is too dark we can go ahead and use that and it's going to give us a soft and nice result. So that's all for this video. Now we have all of the tools that we need and in the next video we're going to be going over the workflow of using these tools effectively inside of our projects. This is the scene that we're going to be using to practice our lighting skills in the next video. But before we do that, let's take a second to organize ourselves and set up a nice workspace where we can easily light our scene with a good workflow. The way I like to get ready to light a scene is, first of all, I like to split everything up into different layers. So especially if with an indoor scene, on the first layer I have everything that's essential to the room. So I've taken out all the extra extraneous details and the window panes and anything like that and I've moved that to another layer and this what this is going to do is allow us to get a nice overall picture of the lighting in our scene without being bogged down by the details it'll also help our preview rendering go a bit faster so I've moved all of those little things over to this layer that we don't really need and are just kind of details that we can add in later as we're fine-tuning lastly I've put all of our lights on one seat and on one layer excuse me and that's just going to be where we're going to have them. So I've just randomly put in that light and it's just there on that layer and I'll put all the other lights on there as well just to keep things organized. So then I like to split our view into two parts. So one I can have be the rendered view and I can get a real-time update of everything that I'm doing in this view right here. Another thing that I like to do is if I go to the properties panel with N under shading I can choose backface culling and that's going to not allow me to see anything that has a negative normal so if the normals are facing downwards you can see that I can see this object the ceiling right here but if I'm looking down at it from above I don't have to be distracted by that or go inside the room or anything like that so I can't see through the walls because they're actually pretty thick but I can see through the ceiling and the floor and that's going to allow me to navigate much more easily so lastly, I like to add a clay material when setting up a light so that I don't have to be distracted by all of the different either glossy shaders or things like that that really we don't necessarily need to see. We just need to see a clear picture of where the light is and where the shadows are. So the way to do that is just select any object. I'll just select the ceiling. I'll add a new material. I'm just going to call this clay and just leave it at the default white diffuse. Now then, over here in the Layers panel, I'm going to sl select that clay material right here, and that's going to override all of the other ones in the layer. Now, if I choose Render Layer right here, it's going to use the properties of the Render Layer, and there we go. So if I'm using a lot of lights, for instance, if I say place one there, place one there, uh, sometimes it can be distracting if I'm turning them off and on. I like to have them all in one place in the Outliner. So what I can do is cho change this from visible layers to select or uh, same types. And that's just going to, when I have a light selected, it's going to show me all of the other types of lights. So if I unclick the camera icon, since we're using the render layer, it's, we're going to use the camera icon so we can still see them in the view without having them being rendered. We can choose which ones we want to preview and which ones we don't. And that's going to really allow us to pinpoint each light and see exactly what it's doing and fine-tune where to go from there. So in the next video we're going to start lighting this room and 
try to get it looking really good. So I'll see you there. In this video, we're going to be using the tools and techniques discussed earlier to light this indoor scene. So really quickly before we do that, one thing that I forgot to do in the last video while I was setting up my workflow is change the color management because it's not directly related to lighting, but it does have to do with rendering and it affects how we see our scene. So in the world panel right down here, in the world tab, under color management, I'm just going to change this exposure value, or excuse me, the gamma value to 2.2. And that's what's going to be known as a linear workflow, is having a gamma of 2.2. And I don't have time to get into that too much here, but you can learn about it online. And it's fairly simple. It just gives us a more accurate representation of light when we're working with it. I also like to give a film look. So you can just choose any of these. They each have a slightly different feel, but that gives it a little more natural tint than the just raw color that you'd get from your render and help things look a little bit more believable. So the first thing that I'm doing when I'm setting up my lighting is setting the most important light first. So I'll turn my environment light all the way off so we just have a black scene. And the main light that we want coming in through the window is going to be our sun lamp. So I'm going to press Shift A, add in a lamp and sun. Now when I move this over and I rotate it, we can start to see exactly where it's hitting. And since I already know that we have a lamp over here that's going to be on, I want to balance that off by having the light from the sun hit over on the left. So since the lamp is going to be on the right, I want to balance that with the sun hitting on the left. And I do want it to hit the coffee table a little bit, so I'll angle it just so that it grazes off there, we have a nice light coming in there, and that should be good to go for our main sun. Since this is kind of an interesting angle, we won't get a whole ton of sunlight, uh, especially on the couch here, but that's okay. I'm going to go in the sun lamp and change the size, since it looks a little bit soft and I want the shadows to be a bit harsher since it's direct sunlight. I'm going to change this to 0.01, and maybe that's a bit too much, so 0.02, let's try that and that's looking good. Another thing that we can do to help our main light is use an environment light. So in the world settings here I'm going to choose environment texture and choose our HDR and I'll set the strength to 1 just to see how it looks. So I'll provide some HDRs with the file so you can go ahead and use them and follow along. But I want to make sure that the sun is coming from about the same direction. So if we go out of the room we can see that the sun is coming right over there and we want the sun coming from the left there. So in the texture settings we can go to our environment texture and rotate this around the Z until it's coming from the correct direction and about the right area that we have the sun coming from. Now we can actually use the node editor to increase the effectiveness of our HDR. So I'm going to split this window and make this bottom section our node editor. And I'll choose material nodes and world. And that way we're looking directly at our HDR right here and it's, as it's plugged into the background. Now if I hide the sun really quick so we're not looking at it. We can see the effect of our HDR all by itself. Now one thing about these is that the strength of it tends to be very very fuzzy since it's very large it's going to give very soft shadows. In fact Blender interprets it as being infinitely far away so it's going to be very very soft. One thing that we can do to increase the strength of the shadows is multiply the strength. So I'm going to use a converter and math node, plug in this color right here, and use that value to plug into the strength. 
so we're using the color of the image itself as the strength, and when we multiply this by, say, a value of 5, we're not only going to increase the brightness, but we're also going to increase the sharpness of our shadows. And now we have a much brighter light, and as you can see, we are getting a little bit more of those shadows right in there. Okay, so now I'll bring our sun back so we can see both at the same time. Now since we're getting that blue atmospheric light from the atmosphere, I'm going to take the sun lamp and I'm going to change the color to make it a little bit yellow. Changing the color of the lights always helps to give it a little bit more realistic result. Now another thing that I want to do is get a little bit of light on the floor and ceiling that are right by the windows. And that's something that doesn't really happen too much when you're using lights that are really, really far away. And a way we can fake this is just by adding a plane right outside the window and making that an emission object. So I'm going to take that plane, rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis, pull that up, and I'm going to scale it pretty big so it's going to be right outside the window. Now normally this would be pretty weird because we can't see any of the environment behind it, but what we can do under the object settings down here, go down to ray visibility, and just uncheck camera and shadow. That way the sunlight will still be able to come through. We won't be able to see it from the camera, but when we take this and we add a new material to it and change that to an emission object, say if we hide our sun and increase this, we'll now get light on the inside. Oh, we do have to take off our render layer since it's using the clay material, so we can't have that at the same time, otherwise it's not using the emission part of it. So I'll turn this down to, say, a strength of 5. And what that's going to give us is this really nice light coming inside the window that's really soft from the window and glancing off on the ceiling, and on the floor, and all the other objects. So that's going to just add a little bit of subtle realism. And I'll go ahead and enable this sunlight back. And now we can add a few other lights just to sort of round out this room. So if we take a look at the second layer as well, we can see all of the other objects. And I'm going to put a light right in here, a light in this lampshade here. And I'm also going to demonstrate using the IES lights right above these pictures right there. So to do the first one, I'm just going to select it and press Shift S. Uh, cursor to selected, that way my 3D cursor is right in the middle of that lamp, and I can just press Shift A, Add Lamp, and Point. Now if I press Shift B and select an area over my preview, I can view only that area and it's going to render a whole lot faster so I can see exactly what I'm doing a bit better. And we can see that that's way too strong, so I'll change that to around 5. Now if you want to get a little bit more accurate colors with your lighting, what we can actually do is use real world color temperature and plug that in. So if we go to our node editor and go back from world to object down here and look at our emission color, we can use a converter, shift a convert and black body. And what that's going to do is use a color temperature, a Kelvin temperature to drive the color. So Right now it's really, really low, so it's about maybe like a, a campfire or something like that. Let's turn this up to 5,000. And now we have a more normal indoor light, and we're getting that nice soft lighting. That's just about the right color. So if you want more daylight, you'd want to increase that, or like a fluorescent light, anything like that. The higher the number, the more bluish it's going to be, and it'll get white and then blue just like a normal temperature would in real life. So I can also take this light, Shift D to duplicate it, and I'll move it over there. Then I'll select this lamp right here, Shift S, cursor to selected, and then press, with uh, this lamp selected, press Shift S again, 
and go selection to cursor and that'll snap that right into that lamp and since we're using a translucent material it's going to show through and that's just going to glow a little bit giving us a nice result now we don't have any lamps in this room uh, over the pictures here but I want to show you how to add in your IES lights in case you need to do that in your own scene so using the add-on you can go to file user preferences and install from file and just click on it and it'll come right up and you can just check this little button here and you'll be good to go so with that selected I'm going to place my 3D cursor by left clicking right over where I want it to be then file and import IES lamp data then I'm going to navigate to wherever you have the IES files and I'll select one of them and import into cycles and I can see we have that light right in there and it gives us this nice handy shape that shows where that light is going to be spread now if I press N I can change the strength I think that's a little bit strong so let's go with 2000 that's looking a lot better and when I duplicate it I actually have to select the light that it's linked to so I'll select that lamp select the object itself and then shift D to duplicate it on the Y axis pull it over and move it up just a bit and there we go one thing that I do want to show you just to optimize the scene is we can use light portals so that's something that we can use with area lights so I'm going to add an area light lamp and area and I'm going to move it over to the side right outside this doorway right here now we're not actually going to use this as a light what it's going to do is tell cycles to direct the environment light into this room or the bounces from the environment into this room and not waste them by putting it out here where we're not going to see anything so it'll just sort of direct the light paths in a way that we're not wasting any time and cycles isn't wasting any memory and so the scene will clear a little bit faster so I'm going to check portal and I'm going to increase the size so that it will cover the doorway right about there and I'll rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis so that it's pointing inwards so it's going to tell the environment light that it's going to come in here and anything that's going outside of this room is just going to be deleted and won't take up any extra memory so I'm going to take this and place it directly in the doorway and move that down and I'm just going to do this exact same thing for those three windows on the left now I can change this from a square to a rectangle just so that I can get a more accurate shape it's better when you're using portals to use one large portal than a bunch of small ones but in this case since these are angled in different directions there's not really hope too much we can do to avoid that I'll duplicate it one more time and put it right here so light portals will help clear up the scene faster if you're using environment lighting like an HDR like we're using right now but it won't help with the sunlight or mesh lamps or anything like that so that's why our scene is still very very noisy one more thing that we can do to help clean up the noise from environment lighting is go to the world settings right here and under settings we can just check multiple important sampling and increase the map resolution so I'll increase that to 1024 and that'll help clear things up a little bit faster so again that's not going to affect the sun that's coming in or the mesh light or any of these other lights but it will help the light from the environment 
to clean up a little bit faster so as it's bouncing around it won't be so noisy. So I'll go ahead and render this out and we'll see what we have. So if you render right now without using the clay material this is what you would get. So in this short series we've covered all the different types of lighting techniques and how to use them in your own workflow. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you again.